artists show us where their inspiration lies on this week's edition of At House. Welcome to the House of Life, an opportunity to check out what's happening on the creative space, especially in this new month of April. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Literature is in many ways like faith. It's a leap of imagination. The month of March may be over and done with, but some artists are showing where their inspiration lies. Like this one, Duke Asidari, who uses his show to celebrate the women in his life. Over 20 paintings were displayed in his very unique style. His subject is still unchanged, but now he wants everyone to understand the fascination for the female gender, which has been his forte over the years. I like women. I like what women do. I like how women run their small businesses. I like how society runs. With 25 paintings and a couple of drawings, he celebrates her virtues, but uses it as a metaphor for what he wants the country to become. Beautiful, caring like a mother. He's looking to the leadership to drive that vision and ignite that passion for love of country and the citizenry. When I paint, my biggest push, my biggest uh, intent, is to make something that I like. Um, so everything inspires me. His style is so impressive. It's, he's unique to him. And you cannot fault him each time you see his works. This exhibition is another milestone in, his, in the role he's been playing in the art scene. It's quite impressive and is Impressionistic style goes a long way to encourage others to have an opinion of theirs. Because his style is such that you can always say, this is Duke, anywhere you see it. That's what artists should learn from him. Since he graduated from the Amado Bello University, Zaria, in 1988, he has not deviated from this medium which excites him. I like to paint. I love it. I love the smell of oil colors. I like to draw. Everything fascinates me. The figures of his paintings are similar, elongated, some missing a limb or head likened to the classical Greek statue of Venus de Milo, whose sculptural features are also seen in these paintings, which have texture, shape, and color. In this exhibition, I had to bother first about how do I interpret my models? How do I interpret contemporary beauty or contemporary fashion? Um, if you're driving in your car, you see women who are half clad and all of that. And then you get back to the, your, to the space, which is your, which, your, which is your strong room. And you're looking at, what do I want to do? So it's, it's more of celebrating the woman and celebrating the strength of the woman. You know, that's, that's basically what it is about. And to play with the colorful mind of the woman. I, I, I've always said that it's not where the person lives. Style is not learned on the street. You don't, like, you don't learn style from the cover of one international magazine. Every woman is colorful. There's a, there's a space for color, for color. So it's the colorfulness of the African woman that actually pushes this work. Duke paints his heart on canvas, and the mutilated images is a way of celebrating all those who stand tall in the face of violence, oppression, and injustice. They refuse to be carved, instead find reason to be joyful in the face of it all. Probably the reason why the images are colorful and exaggerated in height. The part of face talks about the symbolism, the external adornment of a woman where the woman has to cover her body with powder and a lot of lipsticks. Sometimes these things don't they don't work together. But beauty as it were, 
uh, my friend says all the time, that says all the time that if you want to really see the beauty of a woman, see her in the morning. See her in the morning. See her when she's not rubbed all her face, all her powders. So the the thing is that the women are strong. So the choice of color is also strong. It's also bold. The technique is also completely original. The technique is it's uh, the women are mine. These are auxiliary women. They are no other women. These are women interpreted by me. You know, it's not a copy of one one Jamaican artist work. No, this is just my work. While getting to know the whole idea behind this show, we also realize that beyond these models, there's one person who was the inspiration for towing this path right from the start. His mom, Christian by many art enthusiasts as the chief muse. When I started to paint the images, uh, it was not about just trying to get images or get pictures or get paintings. Uh, the core part for me is that the woman, uh, it's assumed that all the time you people say that the woman is a weaker sex, you know. Um, and I said to them, weaker sex, go see the woman at the bus stop at 5 a.m. running a small petty business. Go see the woman next door doing some serious business. It, it, that's not a weaker sex. Some of the works include Powdered Face, Mr. Date, Light and Laughter, Lady in Red, Relative Peace, Joy, amongst others, which also push for the sustenance of this medium, painting, which he feels may be lost with time as artists explore new territories. Sounds like a man that knows his women. And the man in this next feature could probably take a lesson or two from him. I'm sure you're wondering what I'm talking about. Well, you get my drift when At House returns. Don't go anywhere. He was commissioned for the decorations of National Theatre in Lagos and other parts of Nigeria for the second World Black and African Festival of Art and Culture, Festic, in 1977. A painter, sculptor, graphic designer and advertising director. He won many international laurels, among which was the prize won in 1950 Festival of Art in Lagos for his carvings. He attended a technical vocational institute for his training in art. 